I thought our effort, our tenacity, our intensity, our competitive spirit, <clears throat> our connectedness from start to finish was the best it's been all year long. And I think that was the difference in the game. I don't think it was the plays. I don't think it was were they in zone or man. I think it was the mentality in which we competed. And I thought the guys that played today played with an edge that we need to play with going forward from start to finish. Along the same lines, you talked about having a consistent 40 minutes. Was that about the most consistent 40 minutes that you've had this season? Uh, I haven't watched the tape, but based on as it was happening, I don't think it was close. And just based on the stuff that I review after the game before I come talk to you guys, numerically speaking, for sure it wasn't close. I thought three was incredible. He was averaging 16 field goal attempts over the last five games. And we struggled to guard him off the bounce, particularly <clears throat> in transition. But just based on the initial, before I start studying it, I thought for sure the 200 minutes we played, I mean, uh, very few empty minutes are empty possessions. Uh, Ethan was phenomenal off the bench defensively. Uh, Hassan, I thought that was his floor game was the best he's had maybe since he's been here. I thought Mo played with just an edge about him. Uh, Henry was distinctly better in the second half. Q couldn't take him off the floor. Dre is so good defensively. Didn't try to overcreate. Meant 21 assists on 32 baskets. I think that's our season high in SEC play. Nine turnovers. I think that's um, our season low. So, very thankful for their response. I know you like to uh, focus in on the defensive rebounding. Have you had a game that you can remember that had zero second chance points in, in, in a game? No, sir. Um, I think I think this number. Uh, is the best number since we've lived here. Uh, we defensive rebounded 88%. That's phenomenal. Our goal is 71%. And as you know, uh, we were last in the league going into tonight's game in defensive rebounding percentage. I think we were second in the league going into tonight's game with offensive rebounding. At halftime, we only had two team offensive rebounds. Uh, I wasn't playing based on positions tonight at all. And so some of our typical personnel groupings, they were not that. I think that was a portion of it. Much better in the second half on the offensive glass. We need more possessions from the offensive glass. And categorically, that you could argue that's been the best thing we've done offensively in SEC play. Um, a portion of why the number was lower is we scored at a higher rate. And we got to the free throw line a little bit more than normal. Seems like uh, when you're Olin, are you back off your trip? I am. <laughs> I, I, did you ask everybody how it went when you weren't here? Well, uh, no. I didn't think you would, so I just wanted to tell you, everything went ultra smooth. <laughs> but I probably, probably did. Actually. Yeah, I mean, it was, I mean, Logan was there, Travis was there, uh, the TV people, he was there, uh, whatever, I've never watched TV locally since I've been here, but it, it was, everything was real smooth. Well, e Evan didn't say anything or do anything. Um, right, Travis? Well, I mean, then that yeah, go? Yeah. Travis came back off his trip. There were times when I was at the blackjack table and I wish I was here. Is that all you play was blackjack? No. no you throw dice? <laughs> I didn't. But, you uh, played roulette? Uh, I did not. I played some three card poker. I, I don't know how to do that. I didn't either. <laughs> <laughs> you might not should have played. So, where did you say your sister-in-law bought the hotel? Luxor. I think it's Luxor. Luxor. <laughs> anyway. Logan, isn't it? <laughs> Luxor. That's where Logan stayed uh, when he played AAU in the summer with the San Antonio Rohawks. <laughs>
Uh, I have a Spurs. Sorry. Bob Brazinio. Yeah, Rohawks are trash. <laughs> um, seems like when you were in the half court set that uh, Quentin, and maybe I'm mistaken on this, but it seemed like he was at the top with the ball, almost in a point guard role more than, than I've known. Yeah, um, a little bit of that happened obviously at Vanderbilt. Had so many empty minutes um, from the lead guard spot and. Q had seven turnovers at Vanderbilt. Four of them were offensive fouls. And then uh, tonight, he did have the ball more in his hands. Uh, we were playing boots at that position a lot. Haas, I think, was five assists, zero turnovers. I think that's the only game he's ever played with zero turnovers. I think uh, we, we've schematically changed a lot of what we do offensively to make it all positionless. So they all know what's going on regardless of where they're at. But what you said is correct. I was just wondering if because he's been you know, scoring I've, so well. Maybe I, yeah, I, I, I was telling him to get it a few times when it's supposed to be positionless. But he, I thought he played really, really well. I yeah. thought he played off two feet. Uh, I know one of his turnovers was after a free throw make when we tried to do the sideline break. I don't remember when his other turnover was. I, I don't remember it. I also wanted to ask you about um, – they're about midway through the second half. They hit a couple of threes. Yeah. Georgia did and got within seven. Yes. It looked like they might make it a, a you know, a game. Yeah. And uh, there have been times when my, this season y'all might have struggled a little bit with that, but y'all came back and outscored thirteen to four over the next two or three minutes. Yeah, that the first time out I think I only called one time out in the first half. They had made four threes in a row, went on a twelve oh run, called timeout. And then I think we went on a 13 to something run, 14 0 run. And then um, I think when it got to within seven, I think we scored that next possession. I think Haas may have hit a three. Yes, um, you could argue, I, I was thinking about calling a timeout, but I didn't think that their run was because of our lack of effort. And so. That's why I didn't. And we did respond. You're correct. Well, as your, your players, I mean, with the, the way the offense was just kind of free-flowing today, your players just said everyone from Quentin, the, the last guy on the bench, just seemed to be having fun. Did you, did you sense that? True confidence can only come from your work. And I think they knew they were working. And I think they played with confidence. And I think uh, when you work really hard, I know this is maybe demented, I think that's when it is supposed to be fun. When you're not working and you're not giving your best um, and you know you're not giving your best, that's not going to be fun. And um, like I told him at halftime, I know this quote, I will mess up. But if, if you can read and you don't, you're no better than the person that can't read. And so I know our guys know what we are supposed to do. But if you don't do what we're supposed to do, you're no better than the person off the street that has no idea. So if you know what we're supposed to do, you have to do what you know. And I thought tonight we were much better at doing what we know we're supposed to do. And I think that, that is fun because you're doing what you know you're supposed to do. You talk about having fun and, and momentum or whatever carrying into the next game. Is is a, a win from this kind of, of deficit or this kind of a, a margin needed? Is that something that that is kind of deserved with that work and can create some momentum? Maybe so. Maybe so. You know, you, you start 15 and two, and you lose eight in a row, and four of the eight are one or two possession games. And then you win one by one. Uh, and then you watch that team that you beat, beat the number one team in the country, and then you're up four with 6.43 to play, and you have four consecutive turnovers, three of which were snowbirds on the other end because they were live ball turnovers, and then you fight to make it a game with two minutes left, and you have another critical turnover. 
Yeah, so going into today, we'd lost nine out of ten, and five of those nine had been one or two possession games. I, I just think what has transpired, in, even in the time that I've been here, is the league is m distinctly better, distinctly better in regards to talent, distinctly better in regards to more talent, distinctly better in regards to older, more experienced talent. And I think that there are, I know there are currently Hall of Fame coaches already in this league, but I think that there are others that are currently coaching in this league that are going to be first ballot Hall of Famers. And so the line, the line requires you to give your absolute best just in hopes that it's going to be a game. And when you give away possessions and you give away minutes of not giving your best, we don't, we, Texas A&M, buzz, we don't have the margin to overcome that. Anything else for Coach? Coach's decision? Or? Coach's decision. Yes, sir. Right, thanks, Coach. Thank you, guys.